right, next up, Vladimir Yurkovsky, welcome. Thank you so much. The road to interpretable <laughs> machine learning. Uh, <laughs> Vladimir also runs the Pi Data community in yeah. Athens, and uh, there was a Pi Data meetup last night, if I'm not mistaken, or the night yeah, before. Yeah, it was. It was. I, it I was don't even know what day it is. So thank you, Stavro. Thank you, thank you, Vladimir. Okay, so we have 10 minutes. Uh, so hello, guys. Yasa, uh, Seolus. My name is Vladimir. I'm a data scientist. Uh, before we get started, you know, I would like to say that it's a great honor to be today here. Uh, you know, I would like to thank, you know, Nokia and the University Organizing Committee for uh, making this event happen. You know, it's a really great event, guys. Congratulations. So my presentation, you know, it's going to be a very brief introduction to interpretable machine learning. So before we get started, you know, allow me to ask, so do we have data scientists today in the audience? All right, so maybe about 5%. All right, great. So how many of you have heard of interpretable or you know, explainable machine learning? OK, so a few. All right, great, yeah. So a uh, little bit about myself. So uh, I have a degree in mathematics, in pure mathematics. I have a master's degree in data science. Currently, I am a chief data scientist at Workly. I'm also the organizer of PyData Athens, you know, in Greece. So during weekends, I also teach uh, data science courses to students and professionals at the Code Hub. Uh, so I do a little blogging, so stuff like that. So, and of course, most of my life, I'm doing <laughs> statistical analysis and data reconfiguration. <laughs> All right. So, you know, let's get started. So enjoy. So artificial intelligence, you know, it's everywhere around us. You know, it's this kind of technology that um, uh, unlocks our phone with, uh, you know, a glance or, you know, a touch that, you know, it recommends music that we want to listen to. Uh, and of course, that teaches cars to drive themselves. So, you know, the field of AI has gone through some phenomenal changes over the last decade. Starting off in you know, the middle of 50s and 60s, you know, as a pure academic and research-oriented domain, it has lately seen a, a widespread adoption across diverse industries, so such, such healthcare, uh, you know, banking, uh, you know, the retail, and many, many more. So, you know, but rather than just running lab experiments, you know, what to publish these research papers, you know, the key objectives of modern data scientists are to solve real world problems. So, um, automating tasks, and of course, making our lives easier and better. So, what exactly is machine learning? I'm sure that everybody has heard. So, machine learning is this subfield of AI that tries to learn these very complex mathematical functions um, um, from data to, you know, predict, classify, or, you know, discriminate between different types of phenomena. So, you know, the problem is that, you know, these mathematical functions, you know, become very complex. You know, I would say that they are borderline, you know, impossible, you know, to explain to your boss. They are borderline impossible to explain to your co-workers, and of course, you know, they are borderline impossible, you know, but most important of all, to explain to your customers. So, um, due to this complexity, most machine learning algorithms are perceived as black boxes, so cap capable of performing some kind of magic or, you know, uh, some kind of alchemy to give people what they want. So, these machine learning models are used to provide solutions, you know, to the business. And since they are making an impact on the business in the end, you know, the customers and the stakeholders do have a right to ask us, you know, following questions. So, how can I trust your model? Or differently, how can your machine learning model arrive to a certain decision or prediction? And of course, this brings us to our topic of machine learning interpretability. So, you know, there are many definitions of machine learning interpretability. You know, the two non-mathematical that I like most is the first one is interpretability is the degree to which a human can understand, you know, the cause of the decision. And the second one is that interpretability is the degree to which a human can consistently predict, you know, model um, output. So, what we are trying to achieve with interpretable machine learning is a way to explain to a human being what a complex mathematical function has learned from data. So the higher the interpretability of a model, the easier it is for someone to understand how that model arrived to a particular decision. So let's talk now a little bit why machine learning interpretability is so important. So 
Let's ask, ask ourselves you know, the following question. So if a model performs well, why we do not just trust the model and ignore you know, the fact how the model arrived to that particular decision? So you know, the answer here is that you know, a single metric, such as classification accuracy, or maybe precision, or you know, what they call, is an incomplete description of most real world problems. So consider the following situation. Your boss asks you to build a model uh, that distinguishes between different pictures of um, wolves and of huskies. So after many sleepless nights and long working hour, you come up with a model, let's say a very sophisticated convolutional neural network, a very complex one, that classifies correctly over 90% of your pictures and makes only one mistake. So you can see in the slides. So how many of you think this is a good model? Hands up. So okay, everybody thinks that this is a good model, so let's deploy it to production. <laughs> okay, so this is a bad model. So how do you figure out yourself in the, place, in the first place that this is a bad model? And moreover, how do you explain to your boss that this is a bad model? So of course, this is where machine learning interpretability comes into play. So imagine that you have access to the inner workings of that sophisticated convolutional neural network. Um, so on the left hand side, you know, you have, you know, the pictures that you want to classify on, and on the right hand side, you know, you have those pictures, you know, that those features, you know, let's say in patterns, you know, that your convolutional neural network picks up in order to arrive to a particular decision. So as you can see from, you know, the slide, you know, um, you know, the classifier, uh, picks, you know, uh, in case of, uh, you know, the Huskies, you know, picks, you know, the nose, picks, you know, the eyes, the ears. So in this case, you think, well, this might be a reasonable behavior. So let's deploy it to production. However, if you look at the picture of, you know, the wolves, what it picks up is, you know, the snow in the background. So actually, what we have built here, you know, it's a great snow classifier. You know, I would say a great snow detector. So. Another reason why machine learning is so important is that it's used to ensure the fairness of a model. So by default, machine learning models uh, pick up unintended biases and stereotypes from the data, from our world. So machine learning models can become racist, can be or become racist and sexist. They can discriminate against, um, against uh, protected minorities and groups. So, you know, the two examples that you can see here, you know, are from my notebook. So, you know, they are from, you know, the Google News vectors used with Gensim. So, you know, the first example, we can see that, you know, some vectors, you know, that are near to Mexicans are illegal and illegal aliens. And in you know, the second example, you can see that man is to woman as computer programmer is to homemaker. So, Imagine that you want to build a credit score application and you want to use some natural language processing uh, features you know, in order to, um, to, 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 to explain, um, to build a credit score you know, model. Uh, perhaps you, so in this case, perhaps you might need to think what types of stereotypes you know, this you know, application has in your data. So guys, I think I don't have much time, right? <laughs> So another two minutes or so, so I shall continue. So you know, the goal in this case, you know, so build a model that you know, minimizes you know, the loan default uh, of an applicant and does not discriminate on the basis of gender and ethnicity. So machine learning in this case can be used as a useful debugging tool for you know, detecting bias and ensuring the interpretability of a model. So another reason why machine learning is so important is GDPR. So GDPR, as you all know, stands for General Data Protection Regulation. So, you know, in my opinion, you know, the most important point that you know, affects us, data scientists, directly is the Article 13, or you know, the right to an explanation. So, what you know, the Article 13 says is that the controller, which is, in this case, us data scientists, at the time when your personal data are obtained, provide the data subject with following information. Then goes through a series of points of which one is you know, the following. So you know, the existence of automated decision making and meaningful information about the logic involved, as well as the significance and the envisaged consequences of such processing from the data and subject. So what this actually says you is that if I'm a user 
and he used my personal data to make an automatic decision about me, uh, then I have a right to know, to obtain an explanation on how your model arrived to that particular decision. So this decision may affect what kind of music I'm recommend to listen to, or whether you know, I'll get you know, a bank loan or not. Um, so in both cases, you know, I have a right to know, uh, you know how my machine learning model arrived to a particular uh, you know, decision. So, you know, a very important point you know, that I would like to mention here is the model interpretability versus model performance trade-off. So you know, there is a common agreement you know, in the data science community that such a trade-off exists. So uh, as you can see from the diagram, you know, there is an inverse relationship between model interpretability and you know, model accuracy. So simple models like linear and you know, decision tree uh, and you know, random forests uh, often yield, um, you know, they are very easy to explain. However, this comes with a drop in their performance. On the other hand, more complex models, you know, like neural network, often yield a better performance. However, with a decrease in their you know, explainability. So when you build a machine learning model, what you have to take into, um, into uh, to make a very important decision, you just, do you want to know why what is predicted, or do you want to know why the prediction was made and possibly pay for the interpretability with uh, a drop in the predictive performance. So how we can pick inside of those models? So here is where LIME comes into, uh, into play. So LIME stands for Local Interpretable Model Agnostic Explanations. So um, LIME is you know, very recent you know, invention. By interpretable explanations, we mean that you know, the model helps us you know, to understand the inner workings of our black model, so, and those features, you know, those patterns that your model picks up, you know, whether to arrive to a particular decision or prediction. So by model agnostic, we mean that, you know, this method can be applied to any black box model that we know today and that will be developed in the future. And by finally by local, we mean that for every data point that we predict, we fit a very simple linear model, um, to around that point. So, and of course, you know, the great thing is that you know, Lime is you know, available in Python as well as in R. So I will uh, explain to you in one minute how, very briefly, how Lime works. So you know, imagine that your credit score you know, application, you, know, you have a very complex model that you know, it's not linear at all. So you know, this model tells you whether you know, the data, points, a data point belongs to the class blue which means that the applicant is eligible for a loan, for a bank loan, or whether you know, the data point belongs to the class red, which means that your model thinks that you know, your applicant is not eligible for the loan. So what LIME essentially does in order to generate uh, an explanation for a given observation, it's that it goes on a very local level and tries to approximate you know, the model with a very simple linear model. So then it uses you know, the weights of that linear model you know, to give you an explanation of its decision. So I'm, I'm done, okay? I think that you enjoy it. Um, okay, so thank you very much. Thank okay, you. We don't have questions.